Hey guys, this is Rolf. I'm going to talk to you about something that people ask quite a bit, which is what am I mining now and why? Uh, before I do that, I'm going to take you on a little quick tour and show you what I'm mining here at, at Block Ops, which is my uh, little prototype uh, space. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a mess here, but uh, we've been building some machines lately. So, um, got my son Grant over there. Hey Grant, say hi. He's uh, actually working on an old 386, see if he can get it going. Um, okay, so right now I've got a bunch of um, GPU miners and some bicals. And I'll talk about why I've got the bicals uh, here in a minute. And I also got an A4 um, in a silicon. And uh, as you can see, one of my older ones really needs some love, but uh, we're getting to that. We're getting to that. Um, so. What I like to do here at Block Ops is, is find the most cost effective and the most advanced things to mine. So it's kind of an experiment. At my larger facility right now, we're pretty much just mining Bitcoin there, uh, which that works well. Um, and we're going to probably expand some of the other things that we're doing uh, there soon also. Okay, so people often ask me, what is it that you're mining now? What are the coins that you're interested? Should Bitcoin be the only thing that I'm mining or should I be looking at some of these alternative cryptocurrencies? Now, I'll tell you my opinion on that. And of course, this is only my opinion. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I like Bitcoin mining. It provides a nice, reliable, steady source of Bitcoin. And then I can either take some of that Bitcoin and exchange it on a, on a currency exchange or I can buy stuff with it in Bitcoin and then sell stuff in, in dollars so I can pay for my electricity that way. So um, Bitcoin is, is definitely up there. But I want to talk about some of the alternative cryptocurrencies and how I evaluate them uh, because I like to mine cryptocurrencies, altcoins, when they're inexpensive with the hope that they're going to go up in value. Now when they go up in value it becomes more competitive to mine them. But trying to find out ones that I want to hold for a while as opposed to just mine and sell right away requires a little bit more research. So let me talk about what I look for in a currency. Now I look at things from a point of being able to mine them. So that kind of narrows my view a little bit uh, as opposed to an investment and a speculator and things like that. But that's okay, it's a valid perspective to have because miners are a big contributor to the altcoin community. So first off, I look for the purpose. You know, what's, what's the actual purpose of the coin? Bitcoin was the first. Uh, it's got a very well-defined purpose. There are other purposes out there as well. And as we go through the different altcoins, I'll talk about what I believe their purpose is to be. Next is the community. So uh, an altcoin requires a lot more than just developers that actively develop. It requires uh, people that are going to mine for it. It requires node operators. It takes people that are going to get it put on exchanges, um, integrate it with different uh, mobile wallets, develop a Windows wallet for it, uh, maybe do uh, actual point of sale type integration. There's a lot of different things that need to be done. And just like a business needs more than just technicians or engineers or salespeople, uh, the altcoin needs a community that can encompass all these features uh, of a business to be able to thrive and grow. Within that, there's an ecosystem. So I, there's some key things that I look for in an ecosystem to see if the currency is going to have legs. First of all, I go see, can I, can I download a wallet for it to run on Windows? Because most people use Windows and they're going to want to have um, a, a wallet for to, to store their currency? Is it supported on exchange like uh, Polaniex or Bittrex or one of those other uh, cryptocurrency exchanges? Can it be traded? Um, are there other people that are developing for it? Uh, the hardware, develop, hardware wallet developers is, is a big one. Um, you know, you look at uh, hardware wallets and Dogecoin is supported. Uh, it's been around for a long time. I'm not sure people use uh, use Dogecoin, but it got out there early and it's supported. Same thing with uh, Litecoin. It's supported in a lot of different places. 
And having that type of support is, is pretty important to me. Uh, active development. I like to go to the GitHub uh, for the project and make sure that it's being actively developed, that there's Im improvements to it, that there's a core group of contributors. And for that, I, I like to actually go to the forums and see, okay, are there people asking questions? Are there people answering questions? Are they angry? Are they welcoming? Are they looking to have a community that grows um, and looking to improve things? Or are they you know, more of a, a negative type community? And for me, the ability to mine it is a big thing. So I've gone through mining in other videos. I basically, you know, can I, can I point my GPU miners at it? Can I buy ASIC miners for it? If I do, what's the payback period on those miners? I usually like to see the payback period within about a year. Um, assuming that because of the uh, nature of semiconductor process technology improvements at this point in time is going to happen maybe every three to four years. If I can get my payback on the equipment within a year, not even talking about a potential price rise in the altcoin itself, um, and then I can continue mining with the equipment uh, either for that coin or, or a different coin, then, uh, then it's something that I'm, I'm worth doing it, looking at, or, or if I can buy uh, ASIC miners. For it. So that's the, the, the big things that I look into and, and I spend time doing this research, reading the forums, getting on the Slack, asking questions, watching YouTube videos for, for different folks and exploring different things. And that's how I can get a feel for which of these altcoins I believe is going to be around for a while. So let's talk a little bit uh, about the different elements of the ecosystem and why this is, why this is important. So when I evaluate the ecosystem for an altcoin, I look at a number of different things. First off, uh, you know, are the developers uh, working hard to improve it and figure out what their users want? Heck, have they even identified a core use, user base and, and what their purpose is and are, the, are they starting to engage with that? That's important. Uh, leaders. So somebody's got to set the direction, somebody has to um, talk, to the, talk to the press, talk to the uh, exchanges, talk to the miners, talk to the mining pool operators. You know, there's always going to be um, different opinions and how the leaders can handle those different opinions and continue to move forward and keep everything working together, that's, that's important to me. Um, miners, obviously there has to be uh, a mining community that supports it so that all the transactions in the transaction ledger uh, continue to uh, move forward. Don't want to be able to have any potential fork in the, or an, unto, an undesired fork. Uh, if there's a planned fork in it, that, that's you know, an okay thing. But you don't want miners going off in, in different directions. Uh, having said that, mining pools, so miners point their miners at mining pools, and then those mining pools can make decisions to support new software or new forks or things like that. So it's, it's interesting on how, um, how different elements of the community can help a altcoin to thrive and grow. Uh, exchanges, so it's important for the altcoin to be able to be traded certainly with Bitcoin uh, and with uh, and to be able to get a feel for uh, what its value is uh, because there's you know speculators, there's uh, people that are investors, uh, I should probably put that up there, um, investors and speculators in it, um, people that just like to trade, and, and those are good to have because it provides liquidity to the market and it, it provides the ability for people that mine to sell and for other, other things like that. And then I, I'm a I'm big, big deal for me is, is hardware wallets. To me that's the, really the one secure place to have control of your own cryptocurrency. It's not keeping it on the exchange, not keeping it on a software wallet, whether that software wallet's encrypted or not. I like to be able to have my currency in, in a hardware wallet. So let's talk about the different currencies that I actively mine right now, and I'll tell you why those are and give you some big picture numbers on them. So here's the different coins, and I'll go through on my elements of how I uh, judge these communities. And, and this is a, my biased opinion. I'm sure I'm wrong about things, just like I'm wrong about all sorts of different things, and I reserve the right to change my opinion in the future. Um, 
without any shame. All right, so I've got a bunch of uh, Bitmain uh, Antminer S9s, T9s, things like that. They do the SHA-256. I'm mining Bitcoin with those. Bitcoin's continuing to rise in price. Uh, there's no reason not to continue to operate those machines and, and point them at Bitcoin. I like doing that. I'm not really going to talk much more about Bitcoin. It just is. Um, the community is, is what it is. Uh, there, there is some contention. There is some development. Uh, but that leaves openings for other coins out there. So I have a script miner. I want to get more script miners. The, the one that's coming from Bitmain, the Antminer L3, is, uh, is going to be pretty competitive from a power and hash, hashing standpoint. Um, so uh, sometimes I mine Litecoin with that, and sometimes I mine Gulden with that. Gulden's a, a currency out of the Netherlands and uh, it uses the same uh, hash algorithm so I can, I can point my script miner at a pool that does that. That's where it's currently pointed right now. I've got a bunch of GPU miners and they can do a few different things. Um, there's uh, applications I can run on them that uh, does Equihash mining or uh, ETH hash mining and they could also do the uh, CryptoNote mining with Monero, which, which I don't really do. Um, and I've mined Zcash in the past. Right now I'm mining Z Classic. Um, and I'll go through some of the, uh, I wrote an article on this uh, on my blog where I have a lot of specific details and I have links to Coin Wars where there's mining calculators and on Coin Wars you can get a calculator where you plug in the current difficulty and price uh, and then the cost of your equipment and it'll give you a, a, a payback calculation for the equipment in days. It'll also give you um, how much uh, Bitcoin per a wattage. It, my facility here, I'm limited to about 180 amps at 240 volts. So being able to work within a specific power limitation is very important to me. And I'll put up some of those statistics in, in a minute. I also mine uh, Dash with my X11 ASIC miner, the, the Baikal uh, giant miner that I've got. Um, so uh, I like these different coins. Uh, I like Bitcoin. I, you know, Litecoin's been around for a long time. It has kept a very steady value. I, I'm not sure if it's going to go up in price or not, but there is a big community that mines it, uh, especially, and there's a, a lot of folks that use it in China. It would be great to see uh, Litecoin add some features and improvement and really take a more active development. I'm, I'm not sure whether that's happening or not. Uh, Goulden's under nice active development and there, it has a community uh, getting on their Slack half the time they, they in, speak in, in Dutch, which I don't understand, but that's okay. You got to look from a worldwide perspective on these cryptocurrencies. Like there's one in Southeast Asia called the New Economy Movement. Um, I can't figure out how to get involved in that one. It, it seems like the only way to get involved in that one is to buy three million uh, new economy movement tokens and then run uh, a node and get paid off of that kind of node. That's not something I'm, I'm ready or willing or able to do right now, so I'm not involved in that. But with Dash, uh, there's ASIC miner for it and uh, Dash has a great community. Uh, they've got a plan. They're working that plan and they take some of the mining rewards and point it towards governance and so they're able to hire developers and, and pay to integrate. So Dash has done a really good job uh, with their governance. It, it would be nice to see other folks do that. And so why, why, why do these folks even exist uh, alongside Bitcoin? Well, Litecoin does transactions a lot faster and there's a lot of coins out there. So if people are starting to get slow transactions on Bitcoin uh, or high transaction fees, it should be fairly straightforward to do those same transactions in Litecoin. And if that happens more, then the price will probably go up. Uh, Gould is a very specific coin. Uh, that's based on script, but you know the folks in Rotterdam are going and getting different local businesses to, to accept it. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's worth taking a flyer on. Uh, Zcash, I really like it because within the Z, it's an extension of Bitcoin with the addition of completely uh, private transactions, uh, so untraceable transactions. Bitcoin, as you should know, um, you can run a d bunch of different analysis on the Bitcoin blockchain and get a pretty good feel for who's spending what where. Zcash, not able to do that. Now, Zcash has a nice four-year development uh, planned into the, uh, into the coin uh, mining, and that's going to fund a lot of different opportunities and development. Um, I think Zcash is looking to replace Bitcoin. Uh, I think that's really exciting. Uh, Z Classic is a fork 
of Zcash, a lot of the same technology, and uh, to me, it appears that the community has evolved around it that wants to focus on private transactions and not try to be the, the big corporate uh, version uh, of Bitcoin that that uh, Zcash is. So uh, I like both those right now. Uh, like I said, Dash has uh, is really, to me, focused on being um, a cryptocurrency that can be used in place of cash, kind of the PayPal for cryptocurrency. Fast transactions, private transactions if you want it through coin mixing. Um, and in order to do that, they require master nodes that are going to need to have a lot of uh, capabilities to do things quickly. Their instant send, um, you know, 1.5 second uh, transaction, um, uh, locking the, the dash on a transaction so that vendors can accept and, and payment quickly. Probably not doing justice to that explanation, but there's a link on my, on my blog post. Ethereum is, is something completely different. I, I, I'm excited about Ethereum. Uh, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, it, it's a little worrisome to me that, that they're looking to move from mining, proof of work mining, uh, to proof of stake in the future. But they are getting uh, partnerships with large organizations. That's great. Um, Ethereum Classic, I think, is going in a different direction than, uh, than Ethereum. Uh, I don't have a great feel for Ethereum Classic yet. Um, and in my, in my blog post, I also mentioned Monero. Monero is really a very privacy-focused uh, currency. I, I just don't see that the ecosystem is quite complete enough on there. There's really no hardware wallet. There's uh, the, the window wallet is very new. Um, and it seems to be a, a, a little bit limited in the things that it can do. So I'm holding off on doing anything with Monero. Like I said, I could be wrong. Um, I've been wrong about lots of different things. Okay, so I want to keep this short. There's a lot more details on my website as well as the ability to go and calculate these things. But basically, here's what I'm mining right now. Uh, just because I ran the numbers and this is what makes sense to me. So on my Baikal a Giant ASICs, uh, ASIC miners, I mined a Dash uh, using X11. 192 day payback. Now Dash did have a, a run up in price, but it's very, very low power. I love that. Uh, Z Classic on my GPU miners, that's what I got them pointed to night, right now. 196 day payback, about medium power. Z Cash, about a 44. 445 day payback, medium power, Litecoin and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin to me is still good to mine. Now, do you need to mine it and sell it right away? Well, if you want to do that, the best thing to do is probably run NiceHash if you want to mine it and sell it right away. But if you have the ability to mine it and hold it for one month, two months, six months, a year, and sell it when the market goes up, you can make two to three times your profit. So mine, hold, sell at a high point. Because these currencies are very volatile. They'll have high points, they'll have low points. Okay? But if you do things and you, you mine in a, in a smart and, and, and uh, informed manner and then take the coins that you have, hold on to them for a while securely, and then sell them at a high point, you can be much more profitable than a standard Bitcoin mining operation that just runs the machines and makes Bitcoin. So best of mining to you. Hopefully this has uh, been helpful.